Hello everyone. So today we're going to be installing PySpark on Windows. So before we actually install PySpark, the first thing we have to do is make sure we have Anaconda installed and GOW. Uh, Anaconda is just a common Python distribution. It has a lot of useful libraries, NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, etc. Um, and just useful. And GOW just allows you to have uh, Linux commands on Windows. So the first thing you have to do is install GOW. Um, I should mention that if you already have this stuff installed, skip to step five. Um, if you don't have GW installed, you can click this link on the blog post that I'll provide below. So to check if you have GW installed, open up a CMD. So because I already have Anaconda installed, it has Anaconda command prompt. Don't use that. <laughs> use command prompt. And the reason why is Anaconda... Anaconda command prompt as of today, uh, April 2nd, 2017, has some issues with updating paths. And for what we're going to do, that's important. So to check if you have GOW installed, uh, just do GOW list. And this will just basically show you what uh, Linux executables you have in your system, uh, or executables in general, I should say. Um, and for this tutorial, we need a couple of these. We need uh, curl, which should be right over here. We need uh, gzip which we're going to use to unzip Apache Spark when we download it. Um, and we'll need a couple other ones. OK. So step two, we have to download and install Anaconda. And you can just click on this link, or you can just go Anaconda download on Google. Either should be fine. And then just go through the basic installation process. And then um, after you're done installing Anaconda, if you didn't already have it, um, close your command prompt and then you'll have to open a new one. Um, this is because anytime you do some major installation, chances are you update your paths. And for that, you need a new uh, command prompt. OK, so now we're actually going to be installing Apache Spark. So you can either click on this link um, or just type um, Apache Spark into Google. Uh, click Downloads and then click on this and this will allow you to download Spark. Okay. So on my computer, it downloads into my downloads folder. Um, this is just what I clicked just now, but I already had it downloaded. Um, so once we have this in our downloads folder, uh, we're going to move it into a new directory or basically wherever you want. Um, just know that it's not a good idea to keep it in your downloads folder because if you delete it, well, you don't have Spark anymore. Okay. So I'm going to make a directory in my system um, called opt slash Spark. Um, I'm going to cd to that directory. There are more efficient ways to cd, but that's relevant. Okay. So now that I have this downloaded, um, typically for users, it could take a little bit of time to download. Um, it's a pretty big file. So I'm going to move the Spark that I downloaded into my OPT Spark folder. OK. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to unzip the file, um, and then we're going to untar it. Um, on Linux, this would be easier. I could just do uh, a one-liner. But for uh, my Windows, this is a two-liner. OK. This will take a second. OK, next thing I'm going to do is I'll CD into the Spark. That was untarred. Next thing I'll do is I'll CD into my bin. Uh, Windows is a bit weird in a lot of different ways. But would I need to run Spark properly, otherwise I'll get some weird Pi4j or something error, um, is winutils.exe. So I'm going to copy this line from my blog post. And this just basically gets uh, winutils.exe for you. And I'm going to put it in my bin. OK, um, the next thing you have to do is make sure you have Java installed on your machine. Um, there's a couple of different ways to check. Um, you could um, check your path. 
if you don't like going through this and you kind of just want a nice GUI. Um, on my computer, it's this PC, um, system properties, advanced system settings, environmental variables, and I can basically just check that I have Java installed. Um, I know this looks ugly. You can just search for Java. You can find it. Um, Java's a kind of a pain, okay? But since I have Java installed on my machine, I'm going to keep on going. Okay, um, the next thing we, we're going to do is we're going to go over and edit our environmental variables. Um, this is going to edit, I think, our user variables. Um, you can do user or system. Um, for the purpose of this, I'm not going to go over it. Um, I will, have, however, have a handy link to Stack Overflow where people go over this. Okay, so I'm going to set my uh, Spark home. Um, set X basically just permanently edits this variable Spark home or creates it. Um, set just makes it so, well, I'll just have a link. It's easier. Um, so make my Hadoop home. Um, I'm setting, the next thing I'm doing is setting my Parse Spark driver. Um, if you have a really new version or this is sometime far in the future, you might have to type Jupyter here instead of IPython. Um, I should mention after you uh, use the setx command, you should close your command prompt and open a new one. Um, this just allows for updating of paths and the sort. Okay. Okay. Um, I wouldn't recommend updating path uh, using setx. Probably not a good idea. So what we're gonna do is we'll go back into our um, environmental variables area. Uh, on each computer, it's a bit different. So chances are you might have to Google. Um, so advanced system settings, uh, environmental variables. And for me, I'm gonna edit my system variables. If you don't have access to those because you don't have permission, you can just do it in your user variables. Um, not quite the same, but you deal with what you have. Since I already have Anaconda installed, I should mention that it basically just updated my paths over here. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'll go to my handy blog post and I shouldn't have deleted that. Um, I will close and reopen so I can copy and paste this. Okay, since I won't recommend uh, using setx to update your path, the way we can do this is just mainly update our environmental variables. So you can copy this um, basically, we're just me appending or adding something to the end of our path, and that's why you have the semicolon there. So the way you do it on my computer, um, every Windows version is unfortunately different, so you might have to Google or you can just ask me. So this PC, system properties, advanced system settings, and then we go to environmental variables. Um, you can either do it in your user variables. Um, this is just particularly for my login, or you can do it for system variables for um, basically all the um, usernames or computer. Um, sometimes you might not have access to the system, so you have to use user. Um, so I just go edit. Um, you can see I have Anaconda installed because I have basically this path for Anaconda and I have Anaconda scripts. This just makes it so if I type conda in my computer um, or on my command prompt, it understands it. So I basically just copy and paste what I had over here, I click, I make sure it's terminated with a semicolon before I type my new path. It all seems good. So I click OK, click OK, click OK. Um, at this point, I would actually recommend you restart your computer um, and open a fresh command prompt. Um, Windows can be weird. Um, usually opening a new command prompt helps. Um, it does it like it's usually foolproof, but you never know. So next, open a command prompt. Again, don't use Anaconda command prompt if you can help it for this. Um, it doesn't um, load new um, executables well, or um, in our case, PySpark command. Um, it's a known issue. So next thing we're do is PySpark, master, local, and two. If you're kind of wondering what this is, um, it's actually pretty simple, um, and I have a note here on my blog going over what PySpark 
um, driver Python goes is and what master is. And the two just means uh, I'm launching it on two cores locally. Okay. So I'm going to press enter here. Um, it may take a second if it's the first time you're running it. So because we configured um, IPython with our PySpark, um, it changes it a bit. Um, so just new Python 2. Um, it may take a second for Spark context uh, to be loaded. Um, it's a bit complicated, so I don't want to go into too many details. So the next thing I'm going to do is we'll just test that PySpark is actually working. So on my GitHub, which I'll leave a link to below, uh, under Spark, um, estimating pi, I have a little script where we're going to estimate um, the value of pi. And the reason we're doing this is you just have to make sure that um, PySpark is actually working. Um, if you're curious about this command, uh, Spark context get or create, um, I have a link to a Stack Overflow question, which answers this better than I probably could, or a lot of people, I imagine. Okay. And you'll notice this is compatible if you already have Anaconda installed. Um, SD Paralyze, um, this is just using Spark. And I have a video on how to do word count, which I, where I go over, you know, a lot of Spark commands how they work, et cetera, et cetera. And the next step is, well, just graphing. And that's it for today. If you have any questions, um, please let me know. Um, if you can subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. It helps the channel out a great deal. Um, and I appreciate it. You can also just click subscribe on my GitHub and that'll lead you to my YouTube channel. Um, and that's it. Thanks, have a great one. Bye.